Welcome. Uh, in week three, we looked at data types, variables, type convention, as well as casting. Uh, that we could at week three, which are arrays and operators. So in this video, I'm going to talk about arrays. And in the next video, I'll talk about operators to avoid making the videos too long. So an array, um, an array is a group of like typed variables that are referred to a common, to a, referred to by a common name. So when you say like typed, in other words, we are saying that all the values that can be stored in an array must be of a given type. Like say when we create an array and then specify that this array is of int type, all the variables or all the values stored in that array must be integers. So that's why we are saying, saying that they are like typed, but all of them will be referred to by a common name and each element will be accessed using an index. So arrays can have more than one dimension um, a specific element in an array is accessed by, by an index or by its index. So we have uh, one dimensional arrays, we have multi-dimensional arrays. Now the, the creation of one dimensional arrays follows the, the syntax that you specify the data type and then you specify the variable name, okay? So this is how we can, we, we do it. For instance, we can have something like say, int as the data type, and then the variable name, say maybe max, uh, max like this. So that's how we are creating, how we can create an array as an example. However, this does not uh, reserve memory. It does not allocate memory to the array until we, use the new keyword to specify the size of that array. Now, this thing of putting brackets, these square brackets here, they can be put here or they can be put right here after the data type. So you, you observe uh, that you realize that in Java, the convention is to put the angle, the square brackets just after the data type. So we can do it like say, int and then we put the angle brackets, the square brackets here, and then the variable name or the array name. Right. So that's how we do it. So for instance, here we have int month days. So this creates a variable of type month days, but it doesn't allocate memory to that one. So to allocate the memory now, we write the variable name, which in this case is month days, and then in new, we assign it to new, then the same data type, which is the one we'll be specified here, and then the size. So for instance, if we take this one, int month days, we didn't specify the size. So when you come here, we write month days without square brackets. And then in new, then the data type int, because this one is of type int, and then the size in here, which is 12. Okay. So if you create an array this way, the elements that are going to be initialized to, to all the indexes of this array, they are going to be the default of the particular data type given. So in this case, we are using int, the default value of int is zero. So all the 12 memory spaces are going to have zeros as initial values. Okay. Then array indexing, it always begins from zero. And we can use array indexes to access the elements of an array. So remember when we say um, month days zero, that's the first element. When we say month days one, it's actually the second element. When we say month days 11, that's the 12th element. If you try to access month days 12, that will give you an error called array index out of bounds because you'll be trying to access an element that does not exist in that array since the length of the array is 12. So you can't access the 12th index. The highest index you can access is 11. 
Now you can combine the previous two steps where you create an array name and then you allocate space on, on a new line. So you can combine it to simply say int month days and then you assign it to new int and then specify the size. You can also initialize arrays. If you initialize an array upon its creation, then you don't need to specify the size of that array. I will demonstrate that one in, in NetBeans. Then we can also have multi-dimensional arrays. Multi-dimensional arrays are basically arrays of arrays. In other words, when we have multi-dimensional arrays, we will be able, um, not just rows, but we will also have rows and columns. Okay. We have rows and columns. Multiple rows and columns. So for two, for instance, if you if you have if you want a two-dimensional array where you have rows and columns, in this case, you need two square brackets. And again, you also need two square brackets when you when you use the new type. You also need two square brackets, and then you specify the size of the rows and the size of the columns. If it's a 3D array, you also you, you need three sets of of square brackets, and then you also need three sets of square brackets here, each with a different size. So theoretically, there is no uh, limit as to the number of that you can create for the array. But you would realize that um, um, the problem will dictate the number of dimensions that required. The most common dimension that I've seen people working on is 1D and 2D. It's rare to see arrays that have 5D, 6D, TC. But depending on whatever scenario you have, that's the one that will determine how many dimensions you are supposed to have. All right. So um, the, the, the alternative definition of, I mean, the alternative declaration of an array, like we have seen, we can, we can do something like a int a1, and then we put the angle brackets, I mean, the square brackets after the array name, or a2 here where we are putting the angle bracket, the square brackets just after the data type. So these, uh, you can do n of them, you can do n of them, but this is the home, well, the, 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 the convention in Java, but you can still use this approach, okay. You can also create several arrays of the same type on one line, like here. Int, this is a one dimensional array. Then we have an array nums, we have another array nums two, another array nums two, nums three. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to NetBeans so that I can show you some examples of how we can uh, create arrays, different examples of how we can create arrays. All right. So here we are. We have these square brackets indicate that this is an array. So this one, we are using it to create an array of type string. So the name of our array is called weekdays. And then we are at the same time allocating it to memory uh, that can store seven strings. So new string with a seven. Remember the string data type in Java, it's not a primitive data type. So it's, 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 it's actually uppercase S, it's not lowercase S, as is the case with the int uh, double float etc. So you can also create an array called max this way, int with those square brackets, max, that's the name of the array, and then new int five, so this is, if you were in C++, this was the same as writing it like this. It creates an array called max with a size of five. You can also create an array without specifying the size if you initialize the array upon creation. Like in this case, we are creating an array of type double. And then this array is a 1D array and its name is salaries. And then we are initializing the elements to this. Um, to this array. So the compiler is going to determine the size of this array based on the elements and initialized to it. So the size of salaries in this case is one, two, three, four. So the size of salaries is four and the highest index of salaries is three. 
you can create to a 2D array like this. For a 2D array, we need two sets of square brackets and then the array name and then new int. Then we need two sets again of square brackets, each with its own size. So in this case, this is the number of rows and this is the number of columns. You can also create a 2D array um, without specifying its size, but initializing the elements like this int, and then we have the square brackets, and then the name of the array. Now, um, we are going to specify the rows. Like this is the first row, this is the second row, and this is the third row. So this array, it has three rows. How many columns? One, two, three, four columns. So each of these rows must have four elements. Right? Must have four elements. So this becomes a, a, a three by four matrix. That's actually three by four matrix. You would remember that Java ignores space when you look at the next uh, issues. Uh, Java is, is, is a free form language. So you can even do this for readability. If you think that this is confusing, you can do this for readability. Okay, you can do something like this. So this shows that. This is our array that we are initializing, and these are the elements. So this is a row, this is a row, and this is a row, and these are the columns. So you can also do that for readability. You can also create an array of strings by initializing it at the same at the at the first time you create the array, so that you don't have to specify the size. But the compiler will determine the size based on the number of elements initialized to it. So in this case, we have uh, an array of type string, which is called names, and then we have these elements that are in that array. So the size of this array is one, two, three, four. That's the size of this array. Okay. So for instance, let's suppose maybe I wanted to access the elements, or maybe I wanted to display the elements in names using the for loop. I can use the for loop and do this. Remember indexing begins from zero. And then here I can say i is less than, if I don't know how many elements are there, I can just write names dot, um, names dot length. So names dot length returns the length of that array. And then i plus plus. I can go on and display those uh, names. I can go on and display those names. Each name on its own line. So we're going to display the names in, in names i like this. So I can run this one. I can run this one. Okay. It's telling me that you can use an enhanced for loop to iterate over the array, right? We, we, we can, and we can also use this one. So if I run this one, you realize that, uh, let's just wait a bit so that you can get the output, yes. So there, there the names are Paul, James, Jebor, and Spavat, right? So that's how we can display the names. Um, let me just mention it in, in, in passing, the enhanced for loop that is being referred to there by Java. I can use the enhanced for loop. So if I use the enhanced for loop, I will say for, and then let me say string, uh, let me just say string i, and then here names, and then I can come here and display system dot out, print n and what is an i something like this i know this might not make sense to you for now but we're going to look at a topic yeah, where we will cover these things all right so if i do this again it's going to display all those names so this is called an enhanced for loop right. so basically uh, that's that about arrays i will give you an exercise so that you can you can practice more so in the next video, I'm going to talk about operators. So until then, keep safe.